Hello everyone, my name is Krista Dawkins and I am the head teacher of Crestwood Community School. Thank you so much for choosing Crestwood for your child in year seven. I'm absolutely delighted to announce that the year group is the biggest year group that we have ever had at the school and I've been delighted to open up more spaces so that we can accept your children. This evening's presentation is uh, a, just a, a slight look into what the school does and there will be an opportunity hopefully in June to meet you and your children and get to know you as part of the Crestwood family better. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the senior leadership team, the journey that we've been on as Crestwood, a single school over two campuses and a little bit about the uniform. So I am the head teacher of the school and my normal working day involves spending a morning or an afternoon on each of the campuses. Because I divide my time between the two sites, I am very well assisted by Tim Nash, who is the head of school at the Sherborne campus, and Steve Gibbs, who is the head of school at Shakespeare. Both of those heads of school stay on site uh, every day. Uh, they take care of the operational duties of the school when I'm not in the building. But my main aim is to be on both campuses each day to see the children. So this September is really exciting because we're opening up 281 uh, spaces for the students for September. I know that many of you won't have had the opportunity to come and visit the school over the pandemic and we do hope to change that. However, the video that we produced was a true reflection of our school. Many of you will know that over lockdown we were exceptional in the provision that we offered the children and we are well prepared if, heaven forbid, any of that should happen again. The school has grown significantly since we amalgamated back into 2016. So when we took over at the Sherborne campus, there were 300 students uh, on that campus and at Shakespeare there were 700. Now the school is over 1,200 students with an equal number on both. The standards are rising. Even yesterday we had a visit from the local authority inspector who deemed uh, Crestwood as a very low priority school for the local authority, saying that we knew what we were doing and that we have capacity to improve even further. And Ofsted, although that report was back in 2018, signified that the school was very much on the correct journey and of the right trajectory for improvement. So I believe that since that Ofsted in 2018, that we have come a very long way since then. As I already alluded to, the way in which the school conducted itself uh, during lockdown with online live lessons right from April 2020 meant that we were a school that during lockdown took in 50 mid-year admissions and we're still taking in more now. But it wasn't just the lessons, it was around the communication with we, that we had with parents, but it was also around our response with free school meals and the fact that children needed resources. Even in the last lockdown, we handed out an additional 300 devices and Wi-Fi hubs to ensure that our students could access their learning. But there's nothing like being back in school. And we were delighted to open our doors on the 8th of March to all of our students because we felt that school is where they belonged. The parents, part of our Crestwood family, are really satisfied with what we're doing as a school. And every week I receive positive emails but we also know that we don't always get it right. And so we're very receptive to concerns or queries that parents have. And wherever possible, we will always get back to you in 24 hours. And of course, there's student satisfaction. Students are very happy with the school and say that they are very happy um, with us. So the uniform for Crestwood um, is listed here. Now, the black blazer with the Crestwood logo is something that the children designed. The logo was actually designed by the children. We have a school tie, grey tailored trousers or a knee length skirt, uh, dark socks or natural tights and a black low heeled leather shoe. Now, we're very happy for these to be completely black leather trainers. But what we don't want is fabric trainers, because when they're in science or when they're in design and technology, any hot items can burn through. Likewise, it keeps their feet dry. 
So as long as they are plain black, we do allow trainers, but we would like them to have a separate pair of trainers for PE. We do have an optional red jumper, uh, which keeps children warm in winter, but you don't necessarily have to have the Crestwood logo on that. Wherever possible, we've tried to make our uniform something that you can get from local supermarkets, apart from the blazer and the tie. We do not allow leggings, skinny jeans, or tight-fitting fashion trousers. We want children to be in uniform. Now, the PE kit is a PE logoed shirt, and it's made from the football uh, material, the football shirt material, so it can be easily washed and can be um, just hung to dry and no need for ironing. Black shorts or leggings, so the gym leggings are absolutely fine, or any um, black shorts, black ankle socks and trainers. And then of course, they do go out in winter, so you can actually get a tracksuit or a fleecy top. With regards to jewellery, we are really strict with jewellery and we only allow one uh, pair of stud earrings and a watch. No other piercings are permitted. So please do not get children's nose pierces or lip piercings or whatever else they want piercing unless it's in the summer holiday because we will insist that children take it out. We don't allow any decorative bracelets or necklaces and we don't allow any retainers or spikes or expanders. So please, it's not something that we wish to argue with you about. They are the rules. They've been the rules for a very long time. And so we ask you to abide by those. As for hair, please, can we avoid any carvings in the hair? And can we make sure that the hair is not bright green or bright red or whatever they choose to do over the summer holidays, but that it, wherever possible, it's a natural color. And we don't allow makeup, um, including nail varnish and false acrylic nails for those students in key stage three. One of the things that's really important as head teacher is I know that students, especially through the pandemic, some of you may have uh, faced financial hardship. And it's really important for us as well that students, when they start their secondary journey, feel the part that they belong part of the family. So we will be giving all year seven students a 70 pound voucher that can be redeemed at school kit. For that 70 pounds, you will get a blazer, a tie, a pair of trousers or a skirt and the PE top as a welcome gift from us at Crestwood so that you do you know, get ensure that you have the new uniform and that children feel really great about it. Hello, I'm Steve Gibbs, head of school at the Shakespeare campus. At Crestwood, our key stage three last three years, year seven, eight and nine. And during that time, students follow all national curriculum subjects, uh, including drama and uh, religious education, uh, which we call ethics and philosophy. Uh, the two languages which are, are available, Key Stage 3, are French and Spanish. And if students or you as parents have a particularly strong preference for one of those, please can you express that uh, by sending an email to us as soon as possible to Justine Sayers. The, her email address is at the end this presentation. Uh, so students uh, take the full national curriculum subjects through till the end of year nine, where they would choose their options to carry on through to year 10 and year 11. Teachers assess students on a regular basis in class and use this information to further the student's progress. Assessment grades are also sent home to parents on a termly basis and parents have the opportunity to come into school to speak to subject staff and tutors at various points in the year. But really what's most important to us is that we have a genuine dialogue with parents and the lines of communication are open. And so you will find that we are a very open and accessible uh, senior team and open and accessible staff. So if you call the school, email the school, we will get back to you uh, very quickly and uh, we will try to resolve any issues that you, that you raise. There is another really important way in which uh, parents can keep track of how things are going for their children, and that's through class charts, at which point I'll hand over to Mr. Nash.
Good evening, my name is Tim Nash. I'm the head of school on the Sherbrooke campus. I also oversee the pastoral systems in the school and also safeguarding. So it's lovely to see you all here tonight um, for our event and obviously we've been discussing how exciting it will be that your children will be joining us in September. I'm going to talk to you about obviously the pastoral structure but also class charts um, which is a system we use in school. Now when your child joins us in September they will obviously um, have a year leader. As you see on the screen um, you will have Sean Cleaver as the year leader on the Sherbrooke campus and Ollie Holman on the Shakespeare campus. Um, this, the senior leader sort of linked to the, to the year group will be Andrew Whittick, who works with me under the pastoral umbrella. Um, also, you'll find that your, your child might find um, school a little bit daunting, different to their primary school. Um, so we have pastoral support on both campuses. Now, the staff who work in there are very dedicated. They would walk over broken glass to support children. Um, in anything and everything that they come about. And transitioning from primary school to secondary school can be quite hard for some children. So there are, say, they are there to support the children making that change, but they support on a range of, of issues, forgotten pencil cases, uh, having got a lunch, to obviously to more um, serious issues which they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But on the Shakespeare campus, you'll find you've got Michaela Diang and the, Denise Sharp, who um, are based um, in the partial office on the main crescent. And you've then on the Sherbrooke campus, we have Zena Smith, um, and she is based in Tech technology block. You've also got connected to obviously everything that's going on regarding uh, the transition of your child to Crestwood. Uh, Justin says she is the PA for, um, for us as senior leaders but also she is the liaison regarding any inquiries um, or if you've got um, what you're trying to do the summer school. So they're some of the key people that your children will be involved in and also who you might be involved in in the coming months. In Crestwood, as I mentioned already, and obviously if some of you have got children in the school already, we use a system called, called class charts. Now, class charts records positive and negative behaviours. It records attendance. Um, it also sort of logs homework. Now, there is an app for children. There's an app for staff, but even more importantly, there's an app for you as parents, because if you have children who you ask of an evening, what, what was school like, they'll say, can't remember, don't know. But actually, class charts gives you a bit of a flavour on how well they've been doing through the school day. Um, what it also does, it offers you a chance to sort of see how they're progressing in different subjects. So what you'll see is that if you download the app, and in September we would send you a code, send your child a code, you can then access what's going on. So from a staff point of view, we can give positive points for good working ethic, but also negative ones, obviously, if there are any concerns about of sort of not performing how we would want them in class. Now, over time, children can actually build up their, their points and they can trade them in for um, things in the school um, shop. So we can, children buy stationary items, art equipment, sporting equipment, they can get money off uh, trips, they can get uh, bowling vouchers, cinema vouchers, they can even have afternoon tea with one of us as senior leaders. Um, and actually it's been very popular with Mrs Dawkins over the last couple of years. So um, it's, a, it's a very sort of interesting way of children sort of using their points um, to, for their own benefit. Um, as I said earlier, homework is something that is important for us um, and what um, you'll find is that if your child comes up and says, Mum, Dad, I've got no homework tonight, you have the ability to go in and check what their homework is for the night. It gives you an explanation of the homework, all the resources, says when it's been set, when it's due in um, and how long to spend on it. So again, your, your children have no escape from, from um, school, from, from home if they are trying to convince either of us there's no homework there but it, it, it gives you a homework timetable throughout what's going on. I'll now pass over to the year leaders who are going to talk about further about some exciting things that will be happening for the year group as they transition to us. So looking forward to seeing you all when you start in September. Thank you Mr Nash for, Nash for handing over to us as the year leaders for September. Um, I am Miss Cleaver. I am the teacher of ICT. I've been at Crestwood for five years. Um, I currently have a year nine year group 
that I will be handing over to someone else in September. So I'm now picking up excitedly the year six is coming through in September. I'm, I am really looking forward to uh, being year seven year lead for Sherborne campus in September. Now I'm going to quickly pass you over to Mr Holman who will explain a little bit about himself. Hi, my name is Oliver Holman and I'm going to be the year leader for Shakespeare uh, for the upcoming year seven. And uh, just to reiterate what, uh, what Ms. Cleaver said, we are really excited to meet the year sixes coming up on uh, firstly their transition day and then in September. A little bit about myself. Uh, so I used to be a primary school teacher. So I've seen uh, the transition process from uh, the other side, from the primary school side. And I've been at Crestwood now for uh, five and a half years. Um, and really, really looking forward to, to this role as, um, as one of the year leaders for year seven. I'm going to pass you back now to Miss Cleaver, who's going to talk about some additional information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holman. So today's uh, couple of slides is about additional information, trips and summer school and frequently asked questions. So I'm going to take you through, first of all, the additional information. As you can see in front of you, there is quite a lot of consent forms that will need to be filled in for your child to start smoothly with us in September. These forms will come in a pack for each parent during the transition evenings. We also have really good communication within Crestwood and parents and students. We use social media, Facebook pages and Twitter, and they are updated daily with all the exciting things that we do at Crestwood. We really like to show off all the things we have to offer at Presswood. We really like to prove the local authority that we are an exciting place to be. So we do like to ask our parents to join our Facebook and Twitter pages because not only is it exciting to keep regular updates on what your child's up to, but also you can receive letters and electronic versions of updates via those um, sites as well if necessary. We are fully aware that parents don't always have a great connection with the internet or still lack internet around our local area. And so we still offer the opportunity for parents to come to the main offices on each campus to require, if you require any paper copies or letters that are gonna be handed out. On top of that, there is a system that we use called School Comms. Now, this is a system that you will automatically be registered for unless you opt out via the main offices or ringing up Crestwood and telling them that you don't want to be on the School Comms system. But School Comms is basically where any information gets sent to you electronically via email to notify you of any updates or information that you need to know. Of course, we have our school dogs. Um, Crestwood is quite known for the fact that we have Sherbet and Woody on either campus. We have Sherbet on the, on the Sherbel campus and we have Woody on the Shakespeare campus. Um, they're both brothers and sometimes you will see them both together. On top of that as well, sometimes for charity, we have a bring your pet to school day for the teachers. So not only will you also meet Sherbet and Woody, there is an opportunity for you to meet some of the staff's pets as well on those days, which is really lovely. Please do not worry if your child is scared of dogs or has an allergy to them. Both Sherbert and Woody are kept under really close control with the parent, from the parents and, are, and we would like to ask you to sign a consent form if there are any concerns before your child starts with us in September so that we are fully aware of the circumstances if we were to bring Sherbert and Woody around your, your lessons. And of course, we have our summer school. We are looking to offer it on Monday the 26th to Friday the 30th of July this year. It's five days and it can be held on both campuses with a wide range of sports and activities, academic and creative activities. It is a really nice week for students to get to mix with other students from different schools that they may not have met before in preparation to come in with us, joining with us in September to, to kind of make friends before they arrive. It's a really nice opportunity for them to get to know new people. Not only that, it will help the students find their way around as well. They will be on the campuses, which means they'll feel a bit more confident when they come in September, knowing where things are. 
Letters and applications for this summer school will be sent out via email. It is free, but we do run it at a limited capacity. I'm now going to hand you over to Mr. Holman for the rest of our presentation. Enjoy the rest of our information that we send out to you. Thank you, Ms. Cleaver. I'm just going to talk through uh, some frequently asked questions, uh, one of which is trips. And, you know, normally uh, without the, uh, the, the midst of a global pandemic, we would be running uh, two year seven trips um, at least. So the first is a year seven pantomime, which we did virtually last year. All being well, we will aim to do one of those in the autumn term, whether that be to uh, Winchester or Southampton, which we've been to previously. We'd also normally run a year seven residential. So we've been to Cowshot, we've been to the Isle of Wight previously. And uh, hopefully in the summer term, uh, with all the restrictions being uh, lifted uh, uh, soon, we will be able to run those trips. We also offer a variety of other trips through our different departments. So science ran a trip to Geneva recently, PE run a water sports trip, history run the battlefields trip. So there's lots of different exciting trips that your students can go on when they join Crestwood. Our school day might look a little bit different uh, to you uh, from your uh, junior school day. So we start at 8.30, which is when either our registration or tutor time or assembly starts, and that runs until nine o'clock. Our lessons are an hour and 15 minutes, which gives a really nice length of time for our students to make good progress. There's often a starter activity, the main core of the lesson, lots of time to practice. So our lesson one starts at nine o'clock, lesson two at 10.15, and our lunch is at 11.30. After lunch, we've got a lesson at 12.05, break time is at 20 past one, and then our final lesson is at 1.35. Now you'll notice that the end of our school day is at 2.50, which is a lot earlier than some of our, our local feeder schools finish. We do allow a 10 minute uh, period of time at the end of the day for our, our students to talk to teachers if there've been any issues, but obviously that, that can be a lot earlier uh, than they're used to. Breaks and lunch times. There's a lot of options and variety with our breaks and lunch times at, at both campuses. So there's lots of outdoor open spaces with tennis courts, with playgrounds, uh, with seating areas outside. On the Shakespeare campus, we have the multi-use games arena and the uh, Sherbrooke campus has, uh, has got the benefit of two tennis courts. There's also uh, pastoral support where students can go and have their lunch should they wish to. And if weather is, uh, uh, is good in the summer, then our fields will be open for our students to use. So at lunch times, there are selections of hot and cold food available from both canteens on each campus. Now there's a really good selection. Uh, there's often a main meal selection and a snack selection. So the snack selection includes things like pasta pots, jacket potatoes, uh, there's salad bars and sandwiches available as well. We use a slightly different system to uh, other, other schools. We use a, a biometric fingerprint system, which is linked to your account. You can top up your account online uh, using our, our online systems, or there are payment machines outside each office. And meals cost about £2.50, and that covers a main meal, a drink, and a dessert. At break times, there's also the opportunity to get sandwiches and uh, biscuits as well. We do also offer a variety of after-school clubs. So we run the traditional sports clubs such as netball, football, hockey, basketball, rugby, and we are a leading school for volleyball. There's also a large number of other activities that we offer. We've got our famous steel band, our ever popular bake club, and there's lots of other activities that we'll be running regularly. We also have a fully staffed homework club. So if students are struggling with the homework, they can go there where there's access to IT equipment and resources for that extra support. Homework, uh, as I said, we, we do offer a homework club, which is absolutely fantastic. Students will get homework uh, for every subject each week. It's normally about 20 to 30 minutes worth, but everything is going to be set using our class charts website that Mr. Nash talked about earlier. Any instructions or resources will be av available from there with any other links uh, that they may need as well. Now, parents will have a separate class charts login and they will be able to see any homework that's set and when it's due in. This will also record positive and negative points awarded by teachers and your parents and sorry and you parents will also be able to check the child's attendance on the app as well. 
We do ask that students carry the basic equipment with them at all times. Now they should bring with them at least a pen, a pencil, a ruler, a rubber, a pencil case. Now a calculator is a very sensible addition. As a maths teacher, I'd really encourage students to bring a calculator with them from year seven so they can get used to how it works in preparation for when they reach their GCSEs. It's always useful to carry more than one of these basic equipment just in case something breaks or if something runs out of ink. One of the big questions that students uh, ask uh, and parents to is, do we have detentions at secondary school? Now, we do have a variety of different detentions. Uh, one of those is a late detention. So if students are late to school, they're required to make up the time at break or lunch. If there's a valid reason for that, we wouldn't make them uh, catch up that time. But we would ask that either a phone call to the school office or a note comes in with them to explain the reasons for that. We're also, as I said, able to keep students at the end of a lesson or at the end of the day for up to 10 minutes to discuss any inappropriate behaviour. What we normally hold is something called a restorative conversation, which allows the student and the teacher to talk about the incident that's happened and move on, starting fresh from the next lesson. For more serious issues, uh, we will contact you uh, via telephone or email and longer detentions can be made. But I'm sure the lovely year six is coming up into year seven. We won't have to worry about detentions at all. Another big question that we get is lockers. So we do offer lockers. Uh, the cost is £25 and that covers the five years. But you will get £5 back when the key is handed back to us. And we've just double checked that, you know, it's been looked after really, really well. Thank you very much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure um, to speak to you. And I'm really looking forward to meet all of the year sixes moving into year seven um, very, very soon. I'm going to hand over to Andrew Whittick, who's going to talk about the rest of the transition process. Thank you. Goodbye. Good evening. My name is Andrew Whittick. I'm an assistant head teacher at Crestwood. I work on the Shakespeare site mainly, and I'll be working with both year leaders during year seven. I'm here to talk you through a bit more of the transition process and what you can expect over the next couple of months. So the next stage of our transition process after this evening, year, year leaders will be visiting all the feeder schools so they can talk to the teachers about any issues that might be arising and they can meet the students themselves so they get a chance to actually see them in action at the schools. Learning support department will go out and have extra meetings with the special needs departments of the junior schools if there are any particular needs that your children have so that we get the support in place ready for when they arrive in September. We're going to hold induction days for the students and induction evenings for parents, as long as the COVID regulations allow us to. And we're going to organise the tutor groups and teaching groups based on things like the choice of language and uh, any particular friendship issues. So we hope as long as the timetable for the opening up of the country works as intended, to hold a transition days but on both the 23rd of June and the 29th of June. Each one will be on a different campus and it will be depending on which campus you've chosen, which one your child attends. They'll go to their home campus, so they'll go to the one that they've actually chosen and they have an opportunity to spend a day as a Crestwood student. So they'll meet their tutors and their tutor groups, they'll have a tour of the school and find out where everything is, they'll have some taster lessons, uh, find out what's, what it's like to actually sit in their lessons and have have um, full secondary school lessons for a change and they'll they'll become comfortable with the environment the routines and the way the day flows as i said they'll get to meet their tutors they'll also get to meet some other teachers and some of the people in their year group also on those days again government regulations allowing we will do our screening assessments so these are computer-based assessments and they allow us to work out whether your student your child might need any extra support in the areas of dyslexia, reading or spelling. Something that worked really well last year for us during lockdown uh, was the early issue of email addresses. So we'll actually issue your child with an email address for Crestwood during the summer term and that will allow them to join a transition classroom where we'll post videos from the tutors, we'll post um, resources from different departments and they'll have an opportunity to ask staff any questions they're, they're particularly worried about. In addition to this, we'll do a transition page on the website with resources from key departments and introductions of the main members of staff so everyone can get to know who's who across both campuses. 
So last year we got uh, each tutor to do a little intro video so the tutor groups got to know them and different departments put resources up. So your child gets an idea of what kind of activities they might be doing in lessons when they arrive with us in September. After those transition days, we hope to hold transition evenings. So as I said, on each campus, we'll have a different day and evening. So if your child is at the transition day on Shakespeare, you'll attend the Shakespeare evening. If they're at Sherbrooke, you'll attend the Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke evening, which gives you a chance to look around the school as well. We'll show you what they've been up to with some photos from the induction days. We'll give you further information for September. You'll get to meet key staff and you'll be given your transition pack. A bit more about that later. You'll have the chance to talk to the tutors informally you'll also have members of SLT there and you'll have uh, learning support there too if you have any concerns at all. If you do have any concerns please share your concerns early the email addresses are on the end of this presentation but if you have any concerns contact the year leader the pastoral support worker learning support school matron or Mrs Sayers if it's about transition or summer school I'll go through those again with the email addresses shortly. The transition pack contains all the information that Ms. Cleaver talked about earlier in this presentation and it will also have your uniform voucher in it. We aim to give those out on the induction evening so it's really useful if you can attend and collect all that information and ask any questions on that evening. If it happens to fall on a day when you're unable to attend we'll manage to make sure that we get those posted out to you. So if you do have questions as I said, please get in touch early. If you have questions about friendship issues or uh, particular specific questions for your child, please contact a year leader on the relevant campus, that's Sean Cleaver or Oliver Holman. Anything about transition or summer school or also about your choice of language, French or Spanish, please contact Justine Sayers. If it's a specific learning support need, a special educational need, an EHCP question, please contact the relevant Member of Learning Support, and it's Karen Groom on the Shakespeare campus and Cassie Smith on the Sherbrooke campus. Any pastoral issues, questions about friendship or routines, or if your child has a particular worry, please contact the relevant pastoral support worker. If you have a medical concern that you need us to be aware of, please contact the school matron. Any other concerns, as I said, I'll be working with both year leaders. If you wish to contact me about anything, please do so. My email address is at the bottom there. So we're coming to the end of the presentation. We've tried to answer the questions that have been put to us about day-to-day -day life at Crestwood. Most common questions that have come up have been covered in this, but if you do have a specific question about your own son or daughter, please do contact us on the emails above. above. That could be friendship issues, medical issues, learning support issues, or just the general query. Please use the emails above, or speak to us on the inductions evening. Thanks for listening to the presentation and we really look forward to meeting you on the induction days and the induction evenings.